Welcome and hello. This is part two of a video series on crime in the United States. If you're more interested in seeing how violent crimes play out under Democrat or Republican leadership, check out the other video linked to my description. After completing that video on violent crimes, you want to come back and see how nonviolent crimes are, feel free or just stay here. The reason why I'm doing this video is because some comments in that other video actually said, hey, does this division still hold true for nonviolent crimes or is there a noticeable difference? And so I went back to the data to find out. As a quick overview, I'm using 2022 crime data from the Crime Database Explorer, which is available to anyone. Uh, the reasons why I use that year and not this year is because the 2022 data is reported as being the most complete and midterms happening just right around then as well gives a good sense of the sentiment in each of the states. I'm also using House representation to stand in for the kind of local perspective and Senate reps are more statewide sentiment, while governors are guidance to kind of how enforcement plays out. All this to answer the big question, is there actually a difference between Democrats and Republicans when it comes to the policies they generate and how it holds up with crime? And I know there's other articles on this, but I kind of wanted to do it differently and more deeply than they did uh, without being partisan about it. If you want, check out the description for more information on what was done to compile this data, what was included, what wasn't, and how I looked at it all. Keep in mind, for all of this data, the way you should read the graphs is, should Republican and Democrat elected officials be just as bad for crime rates as each other, you'd expect to see them both at 100%. As a result, that means that over 100% means that that party is overrepresented in that crime, which is bad for them, and if they're under 100%, that's good news for them. Let's dig in. Arson is to unlawfully and intentionally damage or attempt to damage any real or personal property by fire or incendiary device. Republicans show up on this one by only having a 96.6% of what would be expected, which is good. And Democrats are overrepresented here at 104.6%, which is bad. So Republicans take this one pretty easily. Burglary is defined as the unlawful entry into a building or other structure with the intent to commit a felony or a theft. I was actually a bit surprised here because I immediately assumed uh, that due to Republican states having more guns or more guns per capita or more friendliness with guns, this number would be a shoe in for Republicans. But it actually wasn't. They're overrepresented here at 103.7%. Well, Democrats are at a 96.5%, which is weirdly enough a close to flip-flop of arson. Larceny theft is defined as the unlawful taking, carrying, leading, or riding away of property from the possession or constructive possession of another person, which doesn't include motor vehicles. In this case, the numbers get a lot closer than we've seen with Republicans still taking the win at 98.9%. Uh, while the Democrats show up as 101.5%. Motor vehicle theft is the last one on our list and is defined as the theft of a motor vehicle, which is pretty straightforward. Republicans are significantly underrepresented here, meaning pretty good for them, right? You're less likely to have your car stolen at 93.2%. And Democrats are overrepresented at 109.7%. Now, I'm going to reiterate from my last video. We need better tools. That's the simple fact of the matter. Submitting information to the Crime Database Explorer is not mandatory, and it should be. Law enforcement agencies are already tracking these crimes, and if we want to really do something about it, all of that needs to be in one transparent place where people can do analysis on the data. What I'm interested in at this point, after doing both the violent crimes and nonviolent crimes, is what does this actually mean? What states or leadership can we look to for compelling lowering of crime? It would seem at this point that if we want to lower violent crimes, we'd follow Democrat policies and leaderships. And if we want to lower violent, nonviolent crimes instead of violent crimes, we want to elect more Republicans. If this was literally all the data we had, I'd have to side on electing more Democrats personally because the variation in crime representation in the violent crimes was much wider than here in the nonviolent crimes. And I'd be willing to have 
say, a few more nonviolent thefts to avoid, say, rape and murder. It just isn't that clear that either would go down with just changing our elected officials and subsequently the laws of each state. I would say this isn't enough. So my next step in this process is going to go down an analysis of each crime, look for the top five best states for that crime, meaning the lowest crime rate, and then see if there's any trends that can be pulled out from how that state does enforcement, laws, uh, crime, uh, um, large, you know, imprisonment amounts, economic data, anything else that I can find so that we can sort of see if there really is a partisan line when it comes to crime. Until then, stay out of trouble and off of one of these lists. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.